Hello everybody, I'm Taylor Tomala. Welcome back to Haunted Dash Films, the channel where I teach many things, including photography, which is what we're talking about today. Specifically, nighttime photography, or astrophotography. So let's roll that intro and let's get right to the video. Whether you're shooting deep sky objects in space with a DSLR camera and a telescope or with a simple camera lens and a tripod, this video is made for you. The bare minimum of the equipment you will need to take an astrophotography image like this one here is a DSLR camera and a basic camera lens and a sturdy tripod. I've been shooting Canon for, mm, for all my life, but DSLRs I've been only shooting for the last two years now. And with modern DSLRs and mirrorless camera bodies like from Nikon and Sony are capable of incredible astrophotography images. And additional accessories such as the remote shutter release cable. And if you really want to try to get really specific constellations in there, you know, you want to try to get investing in a Star Trekker mount. But if you're just wanting to get your feet wet in astrophotography, just the basic equipment will do. Now, astrophotography can get very addictive and very expensive. But as far as the type of photography, it only requires a DSLR slash mirrorless camera and the night sky above. Your options where you can set up and take photos are endless. You can do it in your backyard, you can do it at your parents' house, you can do it in the middle of nowhere, or you can do it on a nice sweet beach like I'm right now. And all you need is the clearest night sky. For me, I like to find a place where there's no light and no people anywhere. Now the people are optional, but I like to do this stuff alone. I like to be able to see the sky with my naked eye. Now capturing astrophotography images with your own camera and lens only gets you halfway there. It's the image processing stage that really completes the equation. And it's one of the re reasons astrophotography can be very challenging. Beginners often like to start out with an entry level DSLR camera and lens. I myself started out with a Canon T6 and a, lens, and a kit lens. I would recommend focusing on the area of interest in the night sky that includes a familiar constellation, a star cluster, you can download planetarium software on your computer or phone like Solarium, which comes on PC, Mac, and Linux. And as far as phone apps are concerned, you can get Photo Pills, which is a very popular app, and Astrophoenix, which I absolutely love. You can dig deep into the weather map layers to get a better idea of the type of cloud cover that you're gonna have at your location, and it's free. There are many others out there that are very helpful for you to plan out your night shoot. Chances are, but my personal journey into photography and into this hobby was a lot like yours. It began with a desire to take amazing photographs and share that beautiful, beautiful images of our night sky with others. Like all the other types of photography, it's 70% preparation and 30% skill. So we, before we need to get the settings just right to make sure that there's a checklist to go through before you actually get out here and do it. Now, I can put the checklist below, but I'm gonna go through it real quick here. The first thing you need to bring is a headlamp, a tripod with a portrait ability that's sturdy, camera DSLR or mirrorless, a wide field fast lens, like an F1.8 or F2, an intravolometer, memory cards, pre-formatted of course, batteries, plenty of those, and make sure that they're all charged. Binoculars are optional, but if you have an app that can see the stars, that's even better. Hand warmers for people that are, that are you know, in cold areas. Uh, flathead screwdriver for your tripod mounts. Telephone lens or prime. Uh, you can have a small folding table, a folding chair, and you know, someone to carry it all with you. A cell phone app with a red light on it. A quick battery charger for cell phones if you're using the Wi-Fi connection of your camera. And make sure that the cell phone tablet is hooked up to the phone prior to you going out. And a, char a car charger for batteries. Usually when people ask this question, they're referring to a setup that includes the camera and the lens, wondering if they're supposed to go in manual mode or keep it in some other mode. Now I've been capturing astrophotography images with a DSLR camera for you know, a couple years now, and certain aspects of my technique have not even changed. There are, there are general best practices to kind of get into in the camera settings that apply to many types of astrophotography, including those shooting with the basic camera lens and camera. So first thing you need to do is you need to put your camera into manual mode. Use a fast aperture like an F2 to, to F4. 
Use, set your white balance setting to daylight or auto, depending on what kind of theme or kind of ambiance you're going for. Set your exposure length between 15 and 30 seconds, depending on your lens. Shoot in raw format, of course, and use manual focus. Make sure you also you use an ISO between 400 and 1600 or more if you need to. Also, use a two to 10 second delay drive mode. 